thank you for joining with me. What I want us to talk about in this lesson here is what is forgiveness? What does true forgiveness look like? It's a very simplistic lesson looking at it from a doctrinal standpoint, but it's actually a pretty complicated and difficult thing to do <clears throat> from a practical living everyday experience. So what is it that forgiveness looks like? In this lesson, we're going to look at three groups of five in order to help us as we work along. Our first group of five is, I want us to see that Christians are called to forgive. Now, as you read through your New Testament, over 30 times we're told to forgive one another. Here's just five examples. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 15, Jesus says, If you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Matthew 18, 35, you will be condemned if you refuse to forgive. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, forgive others just as Christ in God forgave you. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, do not repay evil for evil, but bless others that you may obtain a blessing. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. So what we see in looking at these few passages compared to what we find throughout the New Testament is that forgiveness is required. Forgiveness is something that every one of us as Christians must do. Now there's a difference between knowing that we need to do it and knowing what forgiveness really means, what it actually looks like. So let's look at five things or five truths about forgiveness. Truth number one, Sin has consequences regardless of whether or not forgiveness has been sought or given. We read in our Old Testaments about David. David sinned with Bathsheba. Uh, David murdered Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba's wife. And David sought forgiveness and received it from the Lord. We see that in Psalm chapter 51. And yet, even though David had received remission or forgiveness of this sin from God, spiritual forgiveness, for the rest of his life, he suffered with the consequences of his actions. You see where it affected his children, it affected his marriage, it affected the entire nation of Israel, it affected David himself. And so although we can get spiritual forgiveness, oftentimes the consequences of our actions remain with us whether we seek forgiveness or not. Now classic examples of that would be drug addiction, Classic examples of that would be a criminal activity where a person could be in prison. He can obey the gospel and be forgiven of his sins, but he still has to pay for the consequences of his action. Truth number two, forgiveness is not condoning what was done to you. When someone sins against you and you forgive them, that does not mean that what they did is okay. That does not mean that what they did was right. It does not mean that what they did to you has been approved in any way. Forgiveness doesn't mean that the sin did not matter. What it does mean is this, that you have a higher priority, and that is yourself. You have a higher priority, and that is your soul. You are not the ultimate judge of that other person to say whether what that person did was right or wrong. But when you forgive, you're not condoning what that person did, but you're moving on with your life and making things right with God. Truth number three, forgiveness, your forgiveness, does not make them right with God. When you forgive someone, that does not repair the spiritual relationship which they have broken with their master. God has a plan for forgiveness. It's called the gospel. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, we see that when people repent of their sins and they are baptized for the remission of their sins, they are added to the Lord's church they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at that point. That is how they receive forgiveness from God on a spiritual level. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, we see that as we, uh, as we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. The forgiveness that you and I dole out is on a different level. It's not the same level of which God has as a spiritual father and as a spiritual judge. Our sin, our forgiveness, excuse me, doesn't make them right with God, but it's still the task that you and I need to do. We need to forgive our neighbor. Number four, forgiving is not forgetting. We oftentimes hear that statement, well, forgive and forget. 
But actually, the only one who is able to do that, when the sin is great, the only one who is able to do that is God. In Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 12, God has said, Your sins I shall remember no more. Now, God will help you through it when somebody sins against you. But that forgiveness often will take time. True forgiveness is not something that happens immediately. It's not something that happens without thought. True forgiveness takes time for the person forgiving to actually work through. Now, sometimes someone can sin against us, and I'm not talking about something small. I'm talking about a major uh, strike against us. Sometimes when that happens, we'll just say, I forgive you, and we cover it over, and we pretend nothing ever happened. We pretend nothing is there. That's not what God's calling us to do. God is calling us to work through the situation in ourselves and to find it in our heart as we work through it to learn how to forgive the person who has wronged you and who has worked against you. And that takes time. Forgiving is not forgetting. Forgiveness comes by grace. Forgetting must be earned. Let me say that again. Forgiveness comes by grace, but forgetting must be earned. It takes a while to forget. And no matter how long it's been, and no matter how well you're able to forgive, trust has to be earned. Trust takes time to grow. Trust takes time to be there. It's not a reset. It's not when you say, yeah, I forgive you, you go all the way back and everything's the way it always has been. What forgiveness means is, okay, let's go on with our relationship from this point. Let's grow together without holding things against one another. Let's grow together from this place. And the fifth truth I want us to notice and look at. When you do not forgive, when you're filled with resentment, it really only affects you. Others may not even know that they hurt us. Other people may not even care that they've hurt us. They've gone on and they may not even realize how serious of a situation this has been. I've heard it quoted from many different people, theoretically, Abraham Lincoln even. I think it actually came from Mark Twain. And one thing that Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain said, is holding wrath or anger against someone, not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and thinking it's your enemy who's going to get sick. You're allowing somebody to live rent-free in your head when you're wrapped up in what that person has done to you. And so we've got to learn as Christians to forgive, not only to please God, but to be able to survive ourselves, to survive in a way in which we do. Not forgiving actually only hurts ourselves and only hurts us. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 9 says, Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, But when you dwell on it, it separates close friends. Now, we've looked at five passages which told us that we need to learn to forgive. We've looked at five truths to tell us how forgiveness truly is, what it really looks like. Now, perhaps, most importantly, let's look and see how we forgive. When someone hurts you and wrongs you, when someone strikes you to the core, how Can you forgive that person? Let that issue go. Let God be the judge and move on with your life. First and foremost, as a Christian, strive to be like Jesus. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 27, Jesus commanded us to love our enemies, to pray for them. When someone wrongs you, you pray for them. Now, don't pray for condemnation. Pray that God will be with them. Pray that they will grow spiritually. Pray for good things to happen to them. Love your enemies just as your Heavenly Father has also loved you. Number two, remember that your forgiveness depends on the forgiveness that you give to other people. In the way in which I forgive others, Jesus has promised I will be forgiven as well. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32, we see where uh, Paul writes, Forgive each other just as Christ has forgiven you as well. Number three, realize that it's not something that happens 
in an instant. It's not something that happens in a short amount of time. It's not even something that can happen perhaps in a week, a month, or a year. Forgiveness takes time. And you need to work on it every single day. You have to work on it sometimes every single opportunity that you have. It's a growth process. So often I've seen some Christians tell other people, you need to just forgive that person. You drop it, let it go, go on. True forgiveness, truly working through the issue within your heart, within your mind, within your spirit, will take time. Number four, fill your mind on noble things. Don't spend your entire evening when you're laying in bed thinking about what's been done wrong to you. As you're driving in a car, don't dwell on what this person has said or what this person has done or what this person has uh, given to other people. Fill your mind with good things. Read your Bible. Spend time with good Christian people. Be a person of service, looking in ways in which you can help other people. Be a person of prayer. When you fill your mind with good and godly things, there's not going to be as much room for that bitterness, that anger, and that anxiety to dwell within your heart. And number five, always remember that you need to be forgiven too. No matter what someone has done to me, no matter how much I've been hurt, I've done worse to the Savior. I've done worse to Jesus. Romans chapter five and verse eight tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. My sins caused Jesus to be beaten. My sins placed Jesus on that cross with those nails in his hands and his feet. My sins put that crown of thorns upon him. My sins caused him to be spit in the face and caused him to be beaten. And yet God loved me so much that in spite of my sin, in spite of my selfishness, in spite of my hard-headed ways, he forgave me. Whatever somebody has done to us, it doesn't compare to what we've done to Jesus. And so as you grow every day, recognizing the forgiveness which God has given, you recognize the grace which Jesus offers, it will help us to forgive other people as well. Forgiveness is one of those teachings, what we read of in Scripture, where it's easy to get the concept, but it's hard sometimes to put it into practice. Sometimes we have to be Christians for many, many years until we're seasoned to the point where we truly learn what forgiveness is. Let's be sure that we give God our very best. Let's be sure that we put him in first place in everything that we do. My children, let us forgive one another.